Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode, another podcast, and another game night. Another Friday night game night, Trivial Pursuit Horror Edition. Horror Edition. Okay, it says 100 Years of Horror. I'm excited about this. And we're going to go through it together if I can get it open. Ah, ah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. How does this work? Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Has this. So then it has, of course, this thing. Oh, God. I did not realize it had that. Let's go grab scissors. Give me one moment. Now that I got it open, this is what it looks like. We have Trivial Pursuit Horror Movie Edition, 100 Years of Horror. Then we have our dice, which I'm assuming determines the question. So we have... It's not how to play. Okay, well, I think it's easy. I think it's just like... Um, it doesn't really say how to play, and it didn't... I don't think... Oh, no. I have to go in the... Oh, there's the box. <laughs> so, celebrate 100 years of horror. This bite-sized edition of Trivial Pursuit featuring 600 questions exploring beloved horror films from every era of the silver screen. Even the most passionate horror buffs will find themselves challenged. 100% I will. Um, now, it doesn't really say how to play. So really, it's just questions. That you got answer to. And I'm gonna try to do that. So, questions are here. So obviously, this is how it probably works. Oh, getting started. Removing the package, discard or recycle waste, place the card in the holder with the questions. So this is obviously the holder. Do, do, do. Sorry. So this is obviously the holder here where the questions go. Um, it doesn't really say how to win, so I think that could be based off of you as a um, um, as like a play, as like like how you want to play the thing. Object, oh, never mind. Object of the game is to be the first player to collect six cards, choose a player to go first, and then continue clockwise. So, everyone has this. It doesn't say whether you get to go again or not, though. I don't see any instructions. So, yellow is what I got here. Okay. So, question. What director made funny games and it's short for 2008 American Remake? And I would put a timer. Um, I don't see a timer or anything here, so I would put like maybe 30 seconds. And if you don't get it, obviously go to the next player. If you get it, it still goes to the next player. That is my guess, considering I don't see, like, I don't see an option here for it. So let's let's just do a couple. And if you guys know these answers, comment below before I answer them because I don't know. So I probably won't know half of these. What director made Funny Games in 1997 and it's short for shot 2008 remake, American remake? Michael Haneke or H-A-N-E-K-E. -E, however you say it. And then you put, depends on what how you want to play. So I put this card here used in the back here. As you can see. Okay. And then now next card will be here. And then the questions. I'm not looking at the answers, so I'm not cheating. Okay, give me one second. 
Okay, got a call from my boyfriend, so I wanted to answer. So that is what I am back now, and we are gonna do another roll. We're gonna do about five or ten of them. Let's do five, ten. See if I can answer any of them. Okay, yellow. I've seen this one. <laughs> Put it over here. Yellow. What is the name of the house mother murdered as a result of a prank gone wrong in the house on Sorority Row? 1983. What is the name of the house, mother? I don't know this one. Mrs. Slater. Okay. Let's try again. Green. Okay, I'm going to put them this way. In Deep Red, 1975 protagonist Marcus Daly is a pianist specializing in what musical genre? I'm going to say jazz. I was right! Just because that was a that was a lucky guess. Blue. Which character is not a protege of Jigsaw in the series or in the sorry, what character is not a protege of Jigsaw in the Saw series two thousand four to two thousand seventeen? Amanda Young, Mark Hoffman. Logan Nelson or Peter Stram. I don't know. I know Mandy Young was, I think. I think it was Mark Hoffman. Peter Stram. Darn it. Okay, I was wrong. <sighs> in Trick or Treat, what is the name of the childlike character that appears in all segments? Oh gosh. I don't know. Sam. Okay. I gotta catch up on my horror movies. There's only a few that I really love. Four, so yellow. What is the color of the recurring hooded raincoat worn by the killer in Alice, Sweet Alice? Red? Yellow. Yellow, okay. How many was that? Like four? I've been keeping count. Okay. Blue. Who directed Grindhouse fake trailer for Thanksgiving? Oh, I don't know that one. Ellie Roth. I guess I'm not as big on horror as I thought I was. Pink. What surgical instrument does the resurrected cage creed steal from his father to commit his murders in the pet cemetery? Um, like scissors? A scalpel. I think that's what I was going to say too. Okay, let's do four more, assuming we did six already. Okay, let's see. Another pink. What Get Shorty 1995 and Men in Black 1997 director served as the cine cinematographer for Misery 1990? What Get What Get Shorty? I don't know that question. I don't. Barry Salmonfeld. Okay, I didn't really quite understand that question. I'll be honest. Okay, three more. Green. In Train to Busan 2016, the protagonist, Sik Wu, is traveling with what family member? Cousin. His daughter. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen that movie either. Two more, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Over the course of the film, Dr. Jekyll and, H and Mr. Hyde do the transformations of the titular character become involuntary. Over the course, oh yes, is that a, that's a yes or no question. So over the course of the film, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde do the transformations of the titular character become involuntary. Yes. Okay, we'll go two more, or one more. I didn't reach six. Obviously, I got like one right. In The Invitation 2015, what was the name of the deceased son, Eden, of Eden and Will? Matthew. Hi. Okay. Okay. Maybe we'll do one more. I just want to get one more. <laughs> At least we could be here all day, though. 
clearly I don't know my horror movies well enough to um to get these right. What was the name of the character Zoe Bell played in Death Proof? Ah. Mm, Zoe Bell, the character was named after her. Oh, so Zoe Bell. So the answer was in the question. Okay. We'll do uh, two more. Just for some luck here. <laughs> we might not know any of these, and that's okay. Psycho was an adaptation of the novel of the same name by which author? Mm. <sighs> Stephen King? Stephen King. Right? No, Robert Blotch. Okay, I was wrong. But I thought he did Psycho for some reason, Stephen King. Okay, and last one. After surgery, restores her sight in the eye. What protagonist Mun able to foresee? Uh, what is protagonist Mun able to, um, ghosts or the paranormal? Death. Well, I guess similar. I was pretty close because I know she was seeing. I I didn't realize. Well, like like death, like her death or ghosts, because I remember ghosts. Anyways. Um, and that's actually what traumatized me to take an elevator alone, that movie, because of, um, because I guess what she saw in, oh, how do you close this? Because I guess of what she saw in, um, what do you call it? Um, in the elevator, I am thinking it's this movie, I'm pretty sure it is, and then you see someone hanging behind, she sees someone hanging behind her, and it was really creepy, and I will never, ever be in a, uh, I don't like being in an elevator alone by myself after watching that movie. Let me know what you guys think of the Trivial Pursuit, if you have it, if you're good, if you are a true horror movie fan, and what you love about horror movies, what your favorite one is, I'd love to hear your opinions. What do you guys think? See you soon. Bye now.